coming to give some laps. Oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> does like to pee on people, so just oh. watch out there. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, my foot! Oh, oh, no, oh! See? Did he pee on me? No, I think he missed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to, though, yeah. yeah. Good morning internet, it is 8 o'clock in the morning and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Bongola, South Africa. I will show you on the map where I am and what is the plan for today. So I am now right here, very close to the border with Swaziland and today I'm riding to this area which is an area with a lot of wetlands and national parks and all of that. But I will obviously not take the main highway, which is this one, the road 2. But I will go via this way instead. And over here I'm passing right through two game reserves. So hopefully the theme of today is going to be wildlife. Um, the two game reserves that I'm passing through. Before they were separate and you have to, had to get through the gate. But at some point they made one park out of the two of them. And they just removed the gates and the road is still there. So now you're actually just driving straight through the national park and there's the big five there. So if I'm lucky I see some animals. I've heard that normally the animals stay away from the road because it's actually quite a busy road. But you never know, we will see. I'm really looking forward to it. It is hot, it is sunny. So yeah, let's go. So the total distance of today is about 200 kilometers, so it's not very far, so I should easily be able to make that. What a stunning area. And I think it's only going to get better the closer I get to the game reserves. Some furniture, anyone needing a chair? Oh, there's another hair salon. I'm now in a town. I don't know what it's called, to be honest. Does it say here? Ah. Finally passed that bus. It's a star called. No idea. I'm now entering the national park. I'm in! That was the park already, so that means I've got good news and bad news. The good news is I didn't get eaten by a lion. The bad news is I didn't see one single animal. <laughs> About four kilometers from here, there's uh, hopefully a place I can stay. And then I can park uh, Savannah and then uh, see what is around here. Oh look, a giraffe! Hello! Oh, another one! <gasps> wow, my first giraffes in South Africa. Hi! I think this is only a baby. It's not very big. 
<laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, still here. <laughs> oh, there's another one. It's three of them even. I just saw one more head just peek over there. <laughs> Push baby lodge. Hello, I am. Um, I'm at the gate. I'm looking for accommodation. Yeah, uh, the gate's a manual, of course, so you can push it open by hand. Yeah. Okay. I will. Thanks. Okay. Parking. Reception. This is just a great place. There are some uh, wild animals around, which I will check out later. Um, but this is my little house for now. Welcome. So this is where I'll be staying. But um, anyway, I have the whole afternoon left. Uh, and I'm going to visit uh, a cheetah project, or actually it's a place where they uh, have rescued wildcats, four different species who were all rescued uh, and they're trying to rehabilitate them and release them back into, into the wild. So it's a pretty good project um, and it's really close from here. So I'll visit that uh, just now. So first I will take off all the luggage um, and then let's check out this uh, cat project. I have no money on my phone. Let me try. Okay. Because me too, I want you to also have to go yeah. in. <laughs> okay. I'm starting. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but you always have to call before you go to work. You have to ring them like open the gate. Yes. Ah. What kind of work you do here? Yeah, I'm the waitress. Ah. Yeah. Good. Do you live close from here? Sorry? Do you live close from here? Uh, for today, because we don't have a uh, guest inside. So I was going to work uh, other side. Oh, you work somewhere else? Yes. Ah. But I'm staying inside. Ah, okay. Ah, so when you're working, you have accommodation here? Yes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in South Africa? No, I'm from the Netherlands. Oh. Yeah, I'm coming from, uh, from Zimbabwe. Ah, Zimbabwe? Yeah. Have you been here long in South Africa? Yeah, one, one, one year. One year. Yeah. <laughs> that does not sound good, that car. Yay! Good night, guys. Tell it to you, go catch tow. I'm not. How are you? Good. I'm the only one. Yeah. Now we're very quiet these days. So. Yeah, so first of all, welcome to Zululand Cat Conservation. Um, our project was first started off in 1994. We had just three cheetahs at the time. But now we've grown to include four out of the eight cat species that are found here in Southern Africa. 
So obviously you've still got cheetahs. To your right over there, we've got our African wildcats. To your left, we've got some of our serval. And then we also have caracals here at the project as well. But um, just a few things before we head in. I'm gonna spray your hands as you go in and as you go out. Yeah. Just in case you don't wanna take anything to the cats, don't take anything onto your pets as well. And then also this is a no touching facility. So we're gonna go inside with the cats, but please don't reach down and stroke or yeah. interact with them. Yeah, these look like pretty much like like the house cat. The yeah. house cat, yeah. Yeah, so these are African wild cats here. This is Apple and that's Hapur. So he'll be two years old this year and Apple will be turning seven this year. So as you can see, she's fully grown. So yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. she's much bigger than him. He's still a baby. He's got lots of growing to do. But yeah, the African wild cat was first domesticated about 4,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. So they used to train them to hunt mice in the granaries and then they would reward them. So over the years, he's gained some traits, he's lost some traits and eventually become known what we call the tabby cat today. So they are very, very closely related to each other. And that's what causes problems for these African wild cats is the fact that they're now listed as genetically endangered. Oh, so right. yeah, not the number of cats, but how strong the genetics are being Because they're mixing, on. yeah. Exactly, they're mixing with the house cats. So yeah. yeah, so even apple over here, this is only 98% wild cat. Ah, okay. So, yeah, even ours on 100%, yeah. Yeah. And in the wild, they're known as omnivores. So oh. they'll eat birds, reptiles, rodents, things like that. But if we're unsuccessful at hunting, then they're going to eat fruit and berries to stay ah. alive as well. Yeah, ah, okay. Which is quite interesting. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah. Our main goal here at the project is not only education of the public of these lesser known cat species, but also to try and rehabilitate as many cats as we possibly can as well. So we are known as rehab center the area. We're surrounded by game reserves, sugar cane fields. People surrender their pets to us here as well. Yeah. Whereas someone like Apple, she was born here at the project, but when she was born, her mom was not producing enough milk. So we have to step in and hand raise her. And obviously that's why she's too used to humans. Yeah. I see, yeah. Make our way over to our next species. Oh. Hey, oh, Apple, excuse me. Oh, does that happen more often? Yeah. Immediate attack. <laughs> you stay here. Yeah, it's the most aggressive cat species we have here at the project. This is the caracal. This is a three-year-old male. His name is AK. And then on the left over there is the girlfriend Ruby. And Ruby is turning eight this year. So these cats were known as the desert lynx because of the tufted ears right. that they have. Yeah. But then through research and testing, they realized there was actually no relation to the lynx whatsoever. And that's why their name got changed to Caracal. Caracal comes from their Turkish name and it translates into black ears. So you can see these cats have got lovely black ears. And those ears, they rotate 180 degrees. So he hears everything that goes on around him. And the tufts on top is to help channel sound and vibration into the ear to help them hear better. But also help them with wind direction when we jump into the air as well. So, but this one, the female's a lot smaller. Correct, yeah, I was yeah. just about to say. You can see there's a massive size difference between the two. Yeah. So female, eight, maybe 12, 15 kilograms at the most. Whereas Ooh. the male, as you can see, is much larger. Yeah. So he gets, well, he starts off at about uh, 15 kilograms and then we'll get to about 20 or 25 at the most. They don't seem to like each other very much. No, it's during feeding time, yeah. Ah. The rest of the day they hang out normally, but yeah, around feeding time. They meet. compete, yeah. yeah. So how many of these live in South Africa in the wild? Sure. I'm not too sure, yeah. It's but thousands. Probably hundreds of thousands. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 They've got uh, quite a wide variety of prey, so they go for birds, reptiles, rodents, small antelope like Dika and Impala, the livestock like goats and sheep. And the largest recorded prey of a male caracal has been a full-grown ostrich. <gasps> so wow. incredibly ambitious and incredibly powerful cat. So yeah. Big male. This one is huge. Yeager. And then this is his wife Savannah. Yes, Ooh. everybody. We know. <laughs> So Diego over here was previously somebody's pet because in South Africa, because we have so many, we're not worried about people trying to use them as pets. Yeah, so like I say, only 1% of them that have been domesticated have been successful. 
So very cute and cuddly when it's little, but unfortunately once they hit maturity, they will get aggressive. Very aggressive, very territorial, as you can see. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. probably not a good idea to keep them as pets. I mean, I haven't heard any horror stories about this one here, but we did used to have a male here at the project that actually ate the owner's dog. These cats, they don't just kill for food, they also kill for fun. So we had an article a while ago where there was one male caracal that managed to kill 30 sheep in one night. Because he got into the enclosure, he killed one of the sheep, the rest of them started to panic and run around. They couldn't get out the enclosure, so he just chased them down. He killed all of them, but he didn't eat all of them. So the farmer, the farmer was very unhappy. Yeah. So he thought he was going to get rid of the caracal, or get rid of the problem by getting rid of that caracal. But it was a large male, like Diego over there. So obviously he had a very large territory. Yeah. So if you get rid of that male, all you do is open up the territory for a whole bunch of smaller males, make that problem 10 times worse. And then on the end over there, that's Blaze. So this one was born with a genetic defect. Yeah, and the it's, eyes. Yeah, yeah he can't yeah. open his eyes completely. Yeah. yeah. So no depth perception. Something moves too quickly, he loses track of it. Yeah. So obviously he wouldn't be able to survive in the wild. Yeah. And that's why we'll stay here at the project. Yeah. <laughs> hey, my boy. Yeah. He, he's both sweet and angry. Yes, he is. Yeah. <laughs> The three that we've got in here, the two males were hand raised by our owner and the female was raised by the owner's wife. So, okay, yeah. Um, these two males have been here since they were two weeks old. So, they're very, very yeah. used to humans, obviously. Yeah. Okay. But they were then rescued as cubs or they were born in captivity then? Yeah, they were born in another project. Okay. And then we bought them for breeding purposes. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, so, so slightly strange feeling to walk yeah, in weird, an enclosure eh? <laughs> with two <laughs> cheetahs. Yeah. I believe you, but yeah. it's still hey, feels my a boy. bit weird. So all three of these guys are 13 years old. Those two are brothers from the same litter and then she's from another litter. Right. So you'll notice that everything about them is built for that speed. So the nice long body, the long legs, the long flat tail and that yeah. small flat head of theirs. Yeah, so a few hundred years ago, there was a natural bottleneck of the cheetah genetics because a lot of these cats were removed from the population. Um, it started with the ancient Egyptians using them as pets and things like that. But also because these cats are so highly specialized and they built for speed as opposed to for power like the other predators are, they get absolutely wiped out by lion, hyena and leopard that are much bigger and stronger than these cats here because they built for power, those other ones. It's the small gene pool that we have today is causing a high amount of birth defects in cheetahs and also causing a high sterility rate. So between 70 to 90% of male cheetahs are born sterile. So it's over half the male population that cannot contribute to the population. A, a real risk that at some point they're going to be extinct then. Of course. Yeah. Like I said, there's only just over 6,000 left in the entire world. We have got majority of them here in Southern Africa. There's just over 4,000 of them here in Southern Africa. So we've got majority of the population here. Yeah. Uh, we also do have uh, the most genetic variation, as far as I know, in South Africa because of all the different breeding projects that we have here. Yeah. So that is one thing yeah. going for them. But yeah, these guys are basically cousins and eventually at yeah. one stage it's going to be brother and sister and there's nothing we can do about yeah. it. Yeah. I've never been so close to a cheetah in my entire life, but I still, I, I would not want to come any closer. Like this is, this is fine. No, it's, it's nice fine. and cool at the moment, so they're, they're quite happy. Yeah. Like nor normally during the morning tour, if it's, if it's like really, really hot, like in summer, you get super angry. Or... Oh, they get a bit annoyed, yeah? Oh. I can see they're all hot and bothered. And, uh... <laughs> Wow, he's so much taller when he stands when up. When they are. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now you see how big he is. Yeah. Wow. They look quite small when they're on the ground, but yeah. yeah, he's a big boy. Is there a vet close by? Uh, he stays in Matuba, which is like 20, 30 minutes away. Ah, okay. So not too far. Yeah. It's Cassidy, this is Makuta. Hello, Putsi. Yeah. So this one is also sweet. Oh, I can see. Yeah, yeah cause these boys here, their mom died when they were just two days old from pneumonia. Oh. So we had to step in and hand raise them, obviously. Yeah. Hey, footy foot. 
coming to give some laps. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Does like to pee on people, so just oh. yeah. okay. <laughs> hey, hey, my foot! Oh, oh, nope. oh! See? Did he pee on me? No, I think he missed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to, though. Yeah, yeah. Marking this good call. Yeah, yeah exactly. He was like, he was like you you're belong mine. to me now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now these cats love to go into the sugar cane to have their babies. There's plenty of rodents, plenty of birds there for them to hunt. But in South Africa, we harvest by hand. So we'll burn the sugar cane to get the leaves off and to chase any animals out. And unfortunately by doing that, mom will abandon her kittens oh. and she only saves herself. Yeah. Oh. So if we're very lucky, someone will find the babies and then bring them to us. So Phoenix over there is one of those babies that have come to us from the sugar cane fire. So that's why she looks so different is because she was so badly burnt from the sugar cane. Oh. So oh. she should look like this, but yeah. Unfortunately, she doesn't. To my footer? Hey, no, oh. no, 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 oh. no, 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 no. That was what he was no. waiting for. Yeah. No. He's like, there's my shot. No going up for you. <laughs> you ground it. Okay, I'll get out now. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks for coming. I hope you enjoyed. I did. All about our kitty. Yeah. yeah, so that was really amazing. Thank you so much for no all the explanation and teaching me everything. All right. Wow, that was really amazing. I learned so much about these cats. Loads of things I literally had no idea. And it was just amazing to get up close with some of these rescued cats. I think they're doing an amazing job here at this project. And well, I was the only person, so kind of got a private tour. Really, really amazing. So I'm going to ride back now to the lodge. So that was it for today. Um, I really hope you like this video. If it is, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and then I will see you in the next video. What did she tell me now? What did she say to Yes. Whew. I can't see anything against the setting sun.